Thank you very much for your kind of introduction, uh, Professor um, Mang. I'm Kenjiro Tirada from Tokyo University from J Japan. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank the organizer for inviting me to a special uh, memorial event. Uh, it's a great honor to be here. Um, today, I'm going to talk about two scale characterization of fiber reinforced polymers with self heating effect uh, based on the computational homogenization. Um, most of the work presented here is, was done by Mr. Matsubara here, who is a PhD student of mine. Um, he's a master's student. Uh, she is the female colleague in, this, in my lab. Uh, let's get started with this slide. Um, as you know, the computational harmonization does not provide any function form of the macroscopic constructive equation, especially for nonlinear problems. So the micro macro coupled approach, uh, people say, um, if you square type computation, uh, is very popular in the field of computation mechanics because we don't need to have the explicit function form of the macroscopic constructive equation. Instead, we just uh, perform the microscopic analysis at each integration point of this macroscopic structure, macroscopic finite element model. And these localization and homogenization formulas are utilized to relate the macroscopic and the microscopic field variables. Um, so, the but the you know this FE square type computation has been um, subjected to some restriction of this mathematical theory of homogenization. Here is a discrepancy here. So the method is not versatile. And also, the, it's very expensive and not practical. So commercialization is very difficult. But I don't deny it, the FE type computation, the FE type computation, because it's very powerful. Uh, but instead, we've recently advocated micro macro decoupled type computational homogenization by expe expecting that the macroscopic material behavior inherits from the microscopic one, we assume it for the in cell. Uh, this is a schematic figure uh, diagram of the decoupled type computation homogenization. In this method, we first prepare the in cell like this, and also constitute the model for the constitute material. Then we perform the numerical material test to obtain this type of macroscopic behavior. Then we assume the appropriate macroscopic constructive equation, which is supposed to be available in our analysis software. Uh, we performed the material uh, parameter identification. Then the, the, once the material ident parameter identification is successful, then we can perform the macroscopic uh, analysis like this. If necessary, uh, we can also uh, conduct localization analysis to evaluate the microscopic mechanical behavior like this. Uh, as you can recognize, the computational cost uh, of this computation is significantly small in comparison with this FE scale type computation because the FE analysis just doubled. Okay. So uh, we can easily develop the commercial software using this type of computation. In fact, we organized a cooperative system for developing this type of commercial software uh, with uh, private companies. Um, this also, I have developed product uh, to enable us to uh, perform the micro, micro decoupled computational homogenization. Uh, this is a graphical user interface of ANSYS workbench we have developed for uh, decoupled type computation. Using this software, we can perform the decoupled computational harmonization for a variety of nonlinear problems. Let me show you just a simple example. Um, first, we perform the regime injection molding analysis in order to predict the fiber orientation on this macrostructure. Then we map the information about the fiber orientation in this region. At the same time, in order to obtain the macroscopic uh, material parameter of the assumed macroscopic constructive law, we perform the numerical material test to have this kind of macroscopic stress strain curve uh, using some, some typical unit cell uh, with uh, different degrees of fiber orientations. 
。で、using this data we can obtain the macro、uh, response surfaces of the macroscopic material parameters like this. Okay, then we map this information onto this structure. By using those data, we can perform the nonlinear stress analysis on this macrostructure. But you know, in this study,、uh, we'd like to introduce the self-heating effect, the thermal effect, into this type of decoupled computational homogenization in this study.、Um, but you know, the micro-macro decoupled computational homogenization in this study、uh, hinges on the reliability of the numerical material test, that is, the micro-scale、uh, analysis.、Uh, more specifically, we need to have the Constitutive law of the constitutive material,、uh, especially when we utilize the some plastic resin in the farm plastic,、uh, some、uh, fiber reinforced plastic. So, first step、uh, for the two scale、uh, characterization of the fiber reinforced plastic is to develop a constitutive law of the some plastic resin.、Uh, in this study,、uh, uh, we are concerned with the polycarbonate.、Uh, ex ex um, Exhibiting the self-heating and adiabatic effect. So let us look at the experimental results、uh, of tensile and unloading test of this polycarbonate specimen. And then we could have these stress、uh, load displacement curve like this with different、uh, deformation level before unloading. By using the digital image correlation technique, we can convert this data into the relationships between the stress,、uh, true stresses and true strains.、Um, this is another view of the same test data with different deformation rates. As you can see, we have the different material responses depending on deformation rates and amount of deformation before unloading, and also we have the dependency on the ambient temperature. Um, by fixing the deformation rate 30, minute per, uh, 30 millimeter per minute,、uh, we can rearrange the same test data like this, which represents the, the temperature dependency of the material behavior. And this is a, another test data of the dynamic、uh, viscoelastic measurement. Here we have the glass transition temperature, so、uh, we have the drastic change of the material properties around the glass transition region. So, the material behavior of some plastic resin、um, depends on these factors that is, deformation rates, amount of deformation before unloading, and ambient temperature. But at the same time, we have to attend to the、um, self generated heat due to the inelastic deformation and also the adiabatic expansion because they should have some effect on these dependencies. So, our material model of some plastic resin should have these features. The glass lava transition and dependency of temperature and depend,、uh, deformation rates and stress softening like this and in glass r e g i o n after yielding and the orientation hardening like this and nonlinearity during unloading here, then strain recovery after the complete unloading. In addition, we should have effect of self heating. In this context, we have、uh, recently developed a rheology based constitutive model of, of some plastic resin,、uh, which is partially represented in this article.、Uh, this book has recently been published in honor of Professor Owen of, in celebration of his, his、uh, 75th birthday. In this occasion, I'd like to say to Roger,、uh, where is Roger?、Oh, yeah. oh, happy birthday. <laughs> Uh, let's go back to my presentation.、Uh, this model is constructed as a connection or combination of the viscoelastic and viscoplastic rheology element in series like this.、Uh, first, the viscoelastic part of the model is almost the same as the model proposed by Holzapfel Simo, but all the material parameter here depends on the ambient temperature. Also, the stress is generated only from this viscoelastic element, not from this viscoplastic element. A viscoplastic part of the model、um, simply、uh, takes after the model developed by Richeton et al. 2007,、uh, which enables us to represent suit yielding, which is followed by stress softening like this. Also, we have to consider the temperature dependency of the material、uh, so that 
uh, the both glassy and rubbery behavior can be reproduced. Also, we uh, introduced this effective stress, uh, which is composed of the viscoelastic stress here, minus back stress here. Uh, this effective stress is a driving force of viscoplastic flow with this flow rule. Okay. Also, this back stress will be explained here. Uh, in order to represent uh, uh, the orientation hardening under large deformation regime, um, which is caused by fully stretched molecular chain like this, then we introduce the kinematic hardening device here in parallel to viscoelastic, viscoplastic element here. Uh, this device produces back stress to have the effective stress like this, but this kinematic hardening device is analogous to the rubber elasticity like this. So we employ gent model to represent back stress. Uh, here we have stiffness, uh, which is time, uh, temperature dependent with this function form. So let me summarize the proposed constitutive model. Uh, that is the viscoelastic, viscoplastic combined constitutive model. Um, the model is composed of separate three uh, rheology elements, each of which uh, reflects the micro scale mechanism like this, and also represents the specific mechanical behavior like this. Uh, also, we can represent a drastic change of material behavior among, uh, according to the the ambient temperature like this. Again, the detail of the uh, model is presented in this article. Uh, please uh, check it out. Let me validate the uh, model uh, with this specimen, uh, with the R20 notch of the polycarbonate specimen. Um, if these are the case, test cases for controlling condition that, uh, that is, we have different deformation rates like this. Then we could have this uh, stress strain curve as uh, experimental data. To represent this um, response, uh, we prepare the finite element model, which has only one half of the actual specimen like this. Then, by using this test data, we identified the material parameter, which amount to 69. The, the number of parameters rather large, uh, so we utilize the method of differential evolution as an optimization scheme. Then we could have this comparative result. Uh, each figure shows the, um, uh, this, the results are obtained with uh, different loading rates like this. Uh, each figure here is uh, the the load displacement curve obtained by the experiments and the maker analysis. There, there are some deviations here, but the identification uh, seems to be successful. Uh, let us look at the magnified view of the necking with, uh, for the case uh, with highest deformation rate. As you can see, the geometry by change of necking uh, is successfully simulated here. Uh, we also can represent the temperature-dependent behavior with this uh, proposed model. Uh, you can see the numerical results uh, determines the tendency of the um, experimental result. Okay. Although that these curves are not exactly the same, but uh, I think it's successful. And then com the, the converting the test data, uh, that these data into the true stresses, the true strains, then we have this comparative result. Even though we have um, identified material parameter using the low displacement curve, or the, these uh, true stresses are in, in a good agreement with experimental results. And these are the results uh, for the case with loading up to two millimeter uh, before unloading. As you can see here, we have uh, can, we could simulate the strain recovery after the complete unloading. Okay. Now, these are the results with other deformation uh, level of, uh, before unloading. Uh, again, we can say from the practical point of view that uh, we could, um, the, the result, the numerical result and experimental result almost the same. So. Uh, we can arrive at the conclusion that uh, the proposed constitutive model can be utilized in our numerical material test to realize the decoupled uh, micro macro computational homogenization for fiber layer for sound plastic. But at this stage, uh, up to now, uh, we, have, we have considered 
neither the, the heat conduction uh, nor the heat generation. So next step is to introduce self-heating effect to the temperature-dependent deformation problem coupled with heat conduction in order to realize the strongly coupled some mechanical behavior, uh, some mechanical and mechanical material test. So for that purpose, uh, we employ some mechanical incremental variation formulation for strong coupling problem. Before explaining the incremental variation formulation, let me uh, talk about the standard uh, weak coupling scheme. Here, uh, we have a set of governing equations for the microscale problem for this in cell. Um, this is the deformation problem. This is the heat conduction problem. Uh, we should have the coupling between the constitutive equation and also the temperature here. Okay. Then we could have heat generation due to the inelastic deformation that can be supplied to this heat term. Okay. But it's, it's not very clear how this dissipation energy is converted to the actual heat in this heat conduction equation. So we employ the thermal mechanical uh, in, in incremental variation formulation, which is originally proposed by Professor Ortiz um, in this article. This work is related to this paper, maybe. Uh, in this method, we first define the rate of change of internal potential energy like this. Uh, we have here uh, free energy, the entropy uh, for adaptive effect, and the dissipation potential uh, due to inelastic deformation, and Fourier potential to represent the dissipation due to the heat conduction. Okay. These two, a uh, combination of these two uh, dissipation potential is called dual potential, uh, which can be used to the um, source term here of the heat conduction problem. Also, entropy uh, can generate heat due to the in in adiabatic, effect, uh, adiabatic deformation. So once we can define the rate of change of internal potential density, uh, we can evaluate the rate of change of global potential for the overall body. Um, here, we have rate of change of external potential. Then we can compute global incremental potential, uh, which is energetic change within a certain interval. Then we can define stationary value problem as an inflow problem of this incremental variational uh, incremental potential uh, to search for the set of solution, which correspond to the saddle point in this solution space. In order to solve this saddle point problem, we should have the appropriate solution method, uh, which was presented by presented in this presentation yesterday by Mr. Matsubara, but today uh, we are short of time so to explain the detail of the uh, solution method. So let's move on to the next slide. Uh, in order to incorporate the proposed viscoelastic viscoplastic combined model into the framework of incremental variation formulation, uh, we have to determine the specific function form of the free energy and uh, entropy uh, dissipation potentials. Okay. So in our proposed model, uh, our free energy, total free energy composed of these five um, functional here. Um, also, the dissipation potential is composed of these two functionals. So um, for the viscoelastic uh, rheology element, we are going to use the, this specific function form of free energy and the dissipation potential. Uh, this is the free energy of purely elastic part here. And this is the free energy of the linear viscous element here. And also we have visco visco elastic dissipation potential like this. Uh, these are the specific function form of the free energy and dissipation potential for the viscoplastic part. Here is the free energy of isotropic hardening here, and free energy of kinematic hardening response, and also viscoplastic dissipation potential like this. Uh, this um, Material parameter in this expression uh, depend on the ambient temperature, so we have to introduce the free energy of heat capacity. Okay. Uh, finally, we have to introduce the entropy, a uh, specific function form of entropy, which is composed of three function form. Uh, this specific function form is presented here for viscoelastic and viscoplastic deformation and the heat capacity here. Also, we use this function form of, of the Fourier potential. 
then to validate the performance of the incremental variation formulation, um, we performed the sound mechanically uh, strongly coupled analysis with self-heating. Uh, here we have the heat generation due to the inelastic deformation and also the adiabatic cooling. As you can see, our numerical result provides almost the same temperature rise with the experimental result. So let us move on to the next step, the thermomechanical numerical material test to uh, demonstrate the, the two-scale characterization of the macroscopic thermomechanical behavior of fiber lamp for sound plastics that exhibit the heat self-heating due to inelastic deformation and also adiabatic expansion. This is my unit cell um, for the sound mechanically coupled numerical material test, um, which is composed of the fi carbon fibers and also some plastic resin here. These are the macroscopic deformation mode, uh, which is uh, imposed on this uh, unit cell to perform the two-scale characterization. Uh, these are the macroscopic stress strength curves obtained by some mechanically coupled numerical material tests. These contours movies uh, shows the corresponding microscopic stress responses. As you can see, the microscopic material behavior uh, reflects the um, very peculiar material behavior uh, reflecting the um, material model uh, introduced into the uh, some, some plastic resin. Okay, so to perform the decoupled type computation harmonization, we need to have the macroscopic and anisotropic macroscopic constitutive equation to represent this type of um, very strange uh, macroscopic behavior. Um, as you can imagine, it's a very a tough problem, so uh, let me postpone the work in the, in the future. But instead, we are concerned with the effect of cell heating on this macrostructure. So we performed the standard numerical material test without cell heating. Uh, these blue curves are uh, result without cell heating. Uh, clearly, the, the microscopic heat generation affects the macroscopic material responses like this. Next, uh, let us look at the evolutions of the macroscopic temperature, uh, which is defined by this formula. Um, the, these are the corresponding microscopic uh, temperature distribution. Uh, these are the evolutions of the macroscopic temperature. As you can see, uh, the, they are quite different according to the macroscopic deformation mode. Uh, in this study, uh, we are concerned with the effect of sound mechanical coupling. So or we, uh, let us compare the result with those without uh, sound mechanical coupling here. Um, these blue colored curves are result without sound mechanical coupling. Uh, okay. So the difference between these two curves and these two curves in each of these results uh, comes from the microscopic temperature distribution like this. So let us look at the uh, evolution of the microscopic temperature field uh, in detail. Um, the left figure shows the microscopic temperature distribution uh, with some mechanical coupling. Uh, this is the corresponding microscopic material behavior. Uh, this right figure shows the microscopic temperature distribution without some mechanical coupling. Okay. As you can see, the result with some mechanical coupling exhibit the microscopic temperature uh, distribution, uh, no, 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 heat conduction in the, in the unit cell. Okay. But the result without some mechanical coupling do not exhibit microscopic heat conduction. So reflecting this difference, uh, obtained macroscopic uh, curves, macroscopic stress strain curves quite different from each other. Also, it is very interesting to note that the result with orientation, uh, different uh, deformation modes show the opposite effect of the thermomechanical coupling. And that is, the, this red cup comes below this blue cup. On the other hand, this uh, response to XY shear, um, this red cup comes above this blue color. Well, let me conclude my presentation uh, a first uh, uh, with a uh, view to application to the micro-macro decoupled computation harmonization. Uh, we presented the, the new computative law for polycarbonate, that is viscoelastic viscoplastic type combined model. 
Then, to realize the strong coupling between inelastic deformation and heat conduction, we presented the some mechanical incremental variation of formulation for numerical material test. Then, we presented some mechanical and numerical material test for two scale characterization of macroscopic material behavior, uh, which reflects the heat generation due to adiabatic effect and also the inelastic deformation in the end cell. Um, this is our future work. Uh, we should have developed space-time type uh, homogenization to incorporate non-stationary effect in the inner cell. And also we have to develop an isotropic version of the viscoplastic, viscoelastic combined model. Um, thank you very much for your kind attention.